This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's the Dell XPS 15 Infinity again, 9550 model. This time we're looking at the 1920 by 1080 matte display, non-touch display here. A lot of you have asked for that, and it is the more affordable by three or four hundred dollars version. That that. 4K high gamut display on the XPS 15 is a very expensive item. So how is this display? How does it affect battery life? This is going to be a short video where we answer those questions about the laptop, but we're not going to cover everything all over again because this is the same laptop as the one we reviewed. Otherwise, the only difference here is the display panel. So for an MTR video, this is going to be a shorty. We're going to look at it now. It's back. This is the Dell XPS 15 Infinity Edition yet again. This time we're looking at the 1080p version because you folks requested it. Took Dell a while to get us a review loaner, but here it is. And this is the matte 1920 by 1080 display. It's matte. It doesn't have grain on it. It's beautiful looking display. Of course, you can still see there's a little bit of reflection, but we have some pretty bright studio lights aimed at this poor thing right now. So considering that it is very anti-reflective it's very pleasing it's the infinity design it doesn't matter which resolution you get which means almost no bezel on the top and sides there has to be one at the bottom in part because that is where your chin cam or your webcam is i gotta have some place to put that stuff and also it allows for the depth of the footprint of the keyboard deck over here which is clad in carbon fiber we're not going to go over every single feature of this laptop we have our main xps 15 infinity edition video review and written review on mobile tech review for that and here it is right here for those of you who want to visit and read some words and look at some graphs and participate in the discussions and all that sort of thing so you save about 300 400 bucks by getting the 1920 by 1080 instead of the 4k display what are you giving up you don't get that near full adobe rgb color gamut you get pretty much full srgb which is the web standard for graphics and for video. So that's not a bad thing. It's still a very lovely display. But for those of you who particularly work in print or professional cinema work where you do need the wider color gamut, that could make a difference. Obviously, a 4K display is going to be sharper. You've got a higher pixel density. That said, this one is very sharp, very lovely, nice high contrast display. And you don't have to worry about legacy Windows apps that don't support Windows scaling. Now, all the Adobe CC apps do, of course, all Microsoft's products do, but there's still some out there that don't. And to look at this display, I wouldn't say that I was suffering. It's gorgeous. I would love to watch Netflix on it all day long. It's perfectly fine for photo editing as well. Now, it's a sharp display. It's probably an IXO display as well, which is what the 4K display is. And there's some telltale signs, like the whites have a particularly cool bias. That said, this one isn't quite as cool as the 4K one, which is a good thing. In terms of color gamut, let's bring up our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter graph so you can see it for yourself. This is not a touchscreen, so we can't pinch and zoom in on this. You could use a trackpad to do so if you like, but this has pretty much a basic set of gestures, and it's not pinch zooming by default. Anyway, 97% of sRGB, which is pretty close to full coverage there, 78% of Adobe RGB, so that's typical for high-end laptop panels. And indeed, it has good contrast ratio of 1,200 to 1. Black levels are pretty good at max brightness. It measures 0.34 for black levels. Color, it's fairly calibratable and from the factory. It's the usual. It is too cool. It is too, the whites are a little too towards the blue, that sort of thing, because it makes it look brighter. So that's, that's something that sells for a lot of people. And they take a look and they say, oh, it's so bright. It looks so contrasty. So this is the ca calibrated version. This is a pretty gladiolus flower picture that I've taken. I've used it as the desktop background on a lot of laptops we've reviewed recently. So you can get an idea of it. It is a pleasing thing. I really do like the matte display, and, and it's kind of nice. I'm aiming it right at a whole light panel right now. And you can see that it keeps, we're pretty off angle now, it keeps the brightness and the colors pretty good because it's an IPS level panel, which means very wide viewing angles, so no having to worry about angling it just so. In terms of battery life, this is the 1699 version. So it's a pretty high-end configuration. This has the quad-core i7-6700HQ, 16 gigs of RAM. This has two RAM slots. It has a 512 gig SSD inside. So nicely configured, the usual set of Dell ports, just like on the other one, including USB-C there on the side and HDMI as well, regular USB ports. 
This one has the larger battery. It has the 84 watt hour battery. There is one with a 56 watt hour battery. If you go for the hard drive, you're going to get that one. Anyway, 84 watt hour battery. So same battery that we have on the 4K model we reviewed. So though Dell makes some pretty insane claims, double digit battery life uh, claims for the, the laptop. They must be talking about that Core i3 version, which just has integrated graphics. I don't know. Anyway, the, the 4K model typically lasts us about six and a half hours on a charge. That's with productivity kind of use, streaming some video, not with playing games and things like this, because this does have a very nice NVIDIA GTX 960M graphics card in it. Uh, with this one, we're doing anywhere from eight to nine hours, which for a 15-inch quad-core powerful laptop, it's pretty impressive. It's up there almost with the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. So there is a benefit to getting that 1080p matte non-touch display. You're going to save certainly on some battery life there on the order of better than two hours in our test, which pretty much mirrors what the same story with the XPS 13. That has the QHD Plus display versus the 1080p matte display, and there there's a great battery divide as well. Now, some of you have worried about ghosting. I've seen some, some fears uh, in playing games because this certainly is a good gamer's laptop. I've seen ghosting in, in first and third person shooter action games. We're going to play a little Mass Effect multiplayer just so you can see it in action. And I don't see any ghosting to speak of here that's anything beyond what you normally would see with an IPS display. Let's just run around so you can see. Oh no, acid rain map. I do not see any kind of visual artifacting here going on or anything to speak of, and I'm jumping around a whole lot here. Looks good to me. So that's the Dell XPS 15 Infinity or late 2015 edition. Uh, you can call it by that, you can call it by the model number, any number of things. Anyway, it's the one with the teeny tiny bezels, the new updated design to match the XPS 13. Whether you get the 4K UHD high gamut display or the 1080p model, you're getting one of the nicest and most compact 15-inch laptops on the market. And I'd hope so, too, because it's not exactly cheap, is it? Even though the starting price is $999. For Core i3, Core i3 is kind of against the principle of what the XPS 15 is about as a pro kind of business, pro apps kind of thing, gaming machine, all that sort of thing. Anyway, $12.99 if you want something with a Core i7 inside and that nice specs, worth your money for sure. If you're a Windows person, this one's hard to beat. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch our full Dell XPS Infinity review that covers everything you want to know. Read our written review on mobiletechreview.com where you can post questions in our Discus forum too. And hit the like button.